One of the most common reasons people show up at the ER is because of shortness of breath. And here to tell us more about it and give us all the details, we're joined by, of course, Dr. Zach, back in the house. How are you? It's great to have very you well. back here. Thank you very much. I was telling you, both Joanne and I, we have both gone to the ER because of shortness, shortness of breath. How, how common is it? How often do you see people coming in? Oh, very common. I'd say yeah. every, I mean, uh, I don't know the actual numbers. I know that it's one of the most common reasons that people come to the ER. And certainly I'd say at least once per shift, I'll see someone who's coming in. It's, up, it's right up there with belly pain, chest pain, headaches, you right. know, as the most common reason people come So what in. are some of the common causes of shortness of breath? 85% of causes are either from, it's, this is pretty broad, but either okay. from heart, lungs, or psychological factors, like panic attack, that sort of thing. I would add one other one, which is anemia, just because I, I, I okay. see it a lot. A lot of people come in with shortness of breath, and that can be also caused by severe anemia. But usually, usually it's those other three factors. Uh, what are, so you know you, you mentioned lung is that are you seeing what people that that have suffered from lung disease or you know what what are some of the reasons why why that occurs? So yes, I mean it can be it can be you know sort of run in the mill things like you know like asthma. Some people with okay. asthma get shorter breath. Of course, a pneumonia can make you shorter breath. A, a pneumothorax, which is a collapsed lung, which is something more serious, which needs to be dealt with by a doctor. That's another reason. And then another thing that we think of. Which, which is within the lungs, but it's really a circulatory problem, is a blood clot, uh, also an AKA PE or pulmonary embolus. And that's another reason you can get quite shorter breath quite acutely. What, when, you, when, when it starts to occur, do, you know, and, and you're suffering from shortness of breath, what, what should you do right away? I mean, generally, the problem is, the problem with shortness of breath is it's sort of like chest pain. Like if you call Info Santé, unless you know what it is, unless you know, okay, this is a, you know, I've had this before, this is a panic attack, or uh, I know this is my asthma, I'm going to take my pump. If you don't know what it is, there's really no safe way for someone to tell you, uh, you know, it's nothing. Right, right? Like right. Info Santé can never tell you over the phone, oh, you're short of breath, just, just ignore it. Just right? relax for a little while so, and see if it goes so, away. You don't so want to generally, you basically have to seek help, you know, if you have new shortness of breath that's unexplained and it's not going away, you basically have to get in to see a doctor. Now, I guess depending on the severity, you may need to take an ambulance, or right. if it's just something mild, uh, you know, maybe you can just go see your own doctor if you have time. But generally, you need to get it checked out and until such time as you know, okay, this is my regular panic and this is what I do for it, or this is my asthma and I know if I take my pump, I'll feel better and I've seen my respirologist. You basically have to get it checked out to make sure it's not one of the life-threatening things, the ones I mentioned, or something like from your heart. A heart attack can cause shortness of breath as well. So when I, you know, when I arrive in emergency, I'm suffering from shortness of breath, what sort of tests would they be putting you through at that point? So the first thing they'll do is check your vital signs. So number one on that list when you're short of breath is your oxygen level. Because right. basically shortness of breath is your, your body telling you you're not getting enough oxygen or you're not getting rid of enough carbon dioxide, which is the waste product. Okay. And so they'll check your oxygen, they'll check your heart rate, they'll check your blood pressure and your temperature. And then if you need something urgently, they'll give it to you. So if your oxygen is very low, like it should, in most people it should be close to 100%, maybe 98, 97%, but close. If it's like 88%, then they're going to give you oxygen. Right. If you're fine, if all your vitals are fine and you look okay, then they'll ask you some questions. And that's, honestly, that is one of the most important things because the associated symptoms and what brought it on and what makes it better, those things give you a lot of information. Yeah, let's talk about that because it, it's so important. And I know, you know, I, I, I mentioned to you I had a panic attack. I got, my father rushed me to the ER. But along the way, I, there, there should probably be some questions you're going to be prepared to ask the doctor or answer yeah. from the doctor. What are some of those questions you should be prepared for? And I'm glad you brought that up because panic attacks can easily mimic uh, some of the, well, heart attack is sort of the classic thing. And oh, yeah, I, th I, I seriously thought I was having a heart yeah. attack. I was just telling you during the break, like, so, it was scary. And one of the things that's helpful for that is they'll do an electrocardiogram, which is, you know, the heart tracing, yeah. which is quick, and that'll tell us right away, okay, it doesn't look like there's heart damage occurring right now. And that's helpful if you're having the shortness of breath at that time, we can say, okay, well, at least it looks like your, your heart is okay. So right. that's, and that can be reassuring as well. So if someone's having a panic attack, being reassured a bit can actually, is part of the treatment. Oh, yeah, it brings you down almost yeah. I immediately, just so, knowing what it is. Yeah, exactly. So what we'll ask is, number one, are there any associated symptoms? You know? So if you're having, for example, if you're having crushing retrosternal chest pain, or if you're having uh, lightheadedness and nausea, sweating, palpitations, all those things can go with a heart attack, especially if it's worse when you exert yourself. If you've right. been having shortness of breath recently, and it's every time you walk, like whatever, 10 feet, or 20 feet, and it's getting worse, like less exertion is causing more of the shortness of breath, that's concerning that it's a heart cause, that your heart is not getting enough circulation. Okay. Uh, and then other things are, yeah, what makes it better, what makes it worse, and have you ever had it before is helpful. Are you a smoker? Have you traveled recently? So for the thing I was mentioning yeah, earlier, yeah, which is a pulmonary point. embolus, 
uh, two of the risk factors, one is taking hormones, and the other is long travel, like having a, on, a, on a plane for over three hours, that puts you at risk for a pulmonary embolus. And okay. then there are other reasons, that, actually, it's funny, Joanne mentioned earlier, so it's, it's normal to be a little more short of breath when you're pregnant. Right. Right? But again, if you're suddenly more short of breath, especially if you have chest pain, you can't just chalk it up to, well, you know, it's uh, Yeah, I'm it's, pregnant it's and then this is normal exactly. because you know, Joanne had to go and, and, and see somebody about it and, you know, found yeah. out that she needed rest, right? She had, she had to take some, some bed rest. Yeah. It's always a pleasure having you on the show, Thank Dr. You. Zach. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Some great advice. If you want to find out more, of course, there's so much information each and every time Dr. Zach comes on the show. We put it on our website. If you go to btmontreal.ca, just click on our blog section there. We'll have all the information there for you. It's a high of 16 today. Catherine Verdon-Diamond has your weather and traffic coming up. Of course, you've got your headlines and much more.